Typically, efficiency measurements, so the record efficiency measurements and laboratory efficiency measurements are typically done at STC, so that's standard test conditions. And those refer to uh, a temperature of 25 C, so near room temperature, a irradiance of 1,000 watts per meter squared. So if you picture a one by one meter square, you would have 1,000 watts of light intensity on that area. And a spectrum of AM 1.5 G, so that's the reference spectrum. The AM 1.5 G reference spectrum is representative of the average annual spectrum in the contiguous US on a clear sky day. So to generate uh, the electron hole pairs and to get photocurrent through the cell, we need a light source, obviously. And the most common light source that's used is the xenon arc lamp, although sometimes halogen lamps are used. And of course, we can use the sun as an illumination source because ultimately, PV devices are intended for field use. And a problem that arises with performance measurements outdoors is that they're not as repeatable as they are indoors. And it's probably no big surprise why that, well, we can't control the conditions outdoors as we can indoors. Indoors, we have a fine control over temperature, the intensity of the light source, and to some extent, we can tune the spectrum. Bell Labs in the 1950s reported their efficiency measurements were done using a tungsten lamp. Tungsten lamps are no longer used in the PV industry so much for measuring IV. What's now the standard really is xenon arc lamps, but halogen lamps are also sometimes used for continuous light soakers. The reason that xenon arc lamps are so popular is that their emission signature replicates with reasonable accuracy the outdoor AM 1.5G spectrum. But further improvements can be made to this spectral match to the reference spectrum using filtering techniques or light mixing techniques. What's becoming really popular now in the solar industry is the, the possibility of using LED-based light sources. And the idea with using LED light sources is that if you had enough narrow band emissions, you could almost perfectly replicate the outdoor reference spectrum. However, manufacturers of LED solar simulators that are on, the ones that are on the market now, uh, typically fall short of this goal of creating a perfect test spectrum. The reason being is that they typically only use six to maybe 20 LEDs. And when you don't use enough LED colors, you fall short of replicating the reference spectrum. So even though these LED-based solar simulators fall short of the goal of replicating perfectly the air mass one and a half reference spectrum, we can expect improvements to this in the future. So regardless of which light source is used, whether it's xenon, halogen, or even tungsten, it's important to note that we can always correct back to an AM 1.5G reference spectrum if we know a few things. And this is called the spectral mismatch correction procedure. We need to know three things. We need to know the spectral response of the device under test. We need to know the spectral response of the reference cell and we need to know the spectrum of the simulator itself. So there are published standards that describe different criteria that are important when choosing uh, or analyzing the solar simulator. It's outlined in an IEC standard called IEC 60904-9. And there are three criteria that we look at. Uh, the first one is the light source's spectral match to the outdoor reference spectrum, and that we've already talked about a little bit. Uh, 
The second thing we look at is the spatial non-uniformity. And so what that refers to is how uniform is the intensity on the XY plane. So if you test a module, does the top left-hand corner of that module receive the same light intensity as the bottom right-hand corner? The last thing we look at is the stability of the flash or the light during the IV curve sweep itself. So it maybe goes without saying, you don't want the IV, uh, you don't want the light intensity to change while the IV curve is being taken. So it's really important that it's a stable light source. Uh, in terms of measuring the, the resource or the, the solar intensity available to that PV cell, we use a number of instruments outside. So the solar resource, in a basic sense, can be broken down into three principal components. So there's the diffuse part of the solar resource. So that's photons that have been scattered in the atmosphere by either clouds or what's known as Raleigh scattering. The photons that don't get scattered, the ones that pass straight through, are, are said to be collimated. Those are what we call the direct beam component. And the sum of those two is referred to as the global. And so we have sun sensors to measure each one of those components. We have, a, to measure the diffuse component, we use typically a pyranometer with a shadow ball on top of it. This setup is typically called, a, it could be referred to as a diff, diffusometer. And to measure the direct component, we use what's called a pyrheliometer. And this measures only the direct beam component. So we refer to it as DNI, direct normal irradiance. That sensor tracks the sun, and it has a very narrow five degree field of view. And so it can only see photons that are within a five degree field. The sum of those two is the global. And that's measured with, typically, with a pyranometer. Um, but these three devices that I've just mentioned, those are all thermal pile devices. And a thermal pile device is not spectrally selective. So that means that it responds equally to all incoming wavelengths of light. However, PV devices are spectrally selective. So they do have what's called a spectral response. And the spectral response of different devices can vary significantly. For instance, cad tel is much different than the spectral response of silicon. So therefore, it also makes sense to measure the solar resource with a cell whose spectral response matches that of the PV device. So for this, we use reference cells. And we can show you these are um, like a silicon reference cell, a small area cell that's calibrated under a set of reference conditions.